I welcome you back to Analytics Simplified and in this video we will be talking about Zipf's law in context to natural language processing. This law was proposed by George Zipf in 1935 and it basically says that if I were to rank the words according to their frequencies then we will find out that the frequency of words is inversely proportional to their rank which means if I were to draw a graph between frequency and the rank of the words the graph that I will obtain is logarithmic so in this case what is going to be the observation the observation is the low rank words will have a higher frequency and high ranking words will have a lower frequency so there is an inverse relationship going on between the frequency of the words and their rank now before i move further i want you to attempt this question the question is which is the most common word in english language you have got four options the of and and for and i want you to comment the answers in the comment box the correct answers will be getting a like from me so that everybody knows what the correct answer is okay so moving on with the zips law there are some some key observations with respect to this law like this was the study which was proposed by the authors i have shared the link for your study so what this study found was that not only words but phrases of one or more words they also form very coherent units of meaning in a language so it's not that uh, only single word is going to convey some meaning to you uh, phrases containing one or more words they can act as a coherent unit and they can give you a good amount of meaning in any given language and what the authors discovered was that this law was applicable not only for these words but also for these phrases and as far as the applicability of the law for phrases was concerned it extended over as many as nine orders of rank magnitude which means the applicability of the law for phrases was more profound as compared to the applicability for individual words so in a gist what i'm trying to say is that this law not only works for words but it also works for phrases in a given language now in addition there are some more observations that i wish to make first of all uh, it has been observed that this law holds for almost every language so right now i am considering english language but it has been found empirically that this law holds for almost every language that it has been tested on and if i talk about the rough relationship that exists between the frequency and the rank so the relation between frequency and the rank are could be given by this formula so it's not an exact formula so that is why you should get accustomed to what this formula is actually trying to signify it is trying to signify an inverse relationship between the frequency of the words and their rank now when we talk about the different applications we have the applications of this are not only in natural language processing but in different other fields also for example when we talk about income ranking there also we can find out the this law in action for example in, in when we talk about income what is going to happen a large number of people are going to have a smaller income and higher ranking people or people with a higher rank will have more income okay so in this way what we can find out is the lower ranking people are more in number and higher ranking people are less in number right similarly when we talk about corporation sizes so you will have more number of employees because they are low rank and less number of managers and the higher authorities just because they are acting high so in any organization their frequency will also be low right likewise we can also find the same similarity in population ranks of cities also so the better the rank of the city the lower would be the population because a better rank basically means that the uh, cost of living and uh, the standard of living in that particular city is high and it is possible only when there are less number of people residing in this city alternatively when a city is having more number of people so obviously the standard of living is poor right and obviously the rank of the city is also low now i want you to discover how and in what ways this law also holds for chess so for the chess application i have put it in bold so that i want you to i will not be discussing this application but i want you to attempt in the comment box like how you can figure out the zip lock in action as far as the game of chess is concerned and lastly when i conclude this particular small session i wish to make it clear that this law is actually empirical in nature okay so it's not an exact law it's empirical in nature means whatever findings have been obtained they have been obtained by way of experiment by way of experiments and because it is a statistical law so for this law to be applicable you have to ensure that the corpus you have considered is sufficiently large for a small corpus you may not find the usability of the law it has the corpus has to be decently sized for you to be able to completely observe this law 
So with this, we come to an end of this small session. I hope you have learned something new. Feel free to share this with your friends.